and I would like to thank uh, to organizers for giving our country to be represented in this uh, origins action and uh, in this conference and for their invaluable uh, efforts to make this conference and action a uh, tremendous success. Uh, during the course of the conference, we heard a lot about different kind of drivers for the origin of the life. And here will be presented actually the cosmological uh, driver, uh, particularly connected to the entropy produced by supermassive black holes inhabited uh, nuclei of the galaxies. And specifically, uh, we will, through the talk, have some broader overview about the notion of information, entropy, uh, the, ne uh, uh, the need for the drivers. And in the second part, we will use, actually, we will see the calculation of the entropy based on uh, astronomical tomography uh, surveys, which were undertaken. And uh, if you have, in the sense that you have, that you can have sense about these observations, we have a uh, tremendous reducing of the number of the photons. For example, we have 50 photons per four or five hours due to uh, acceleration of the universe. Through the conference, you can see the data obtained without this effect. However, here you will have actually the results from such observations. So why we can actually try to make some parallels between the cosmology and the, and the evolution of the life? Because within the, the Big Bang framework, uh, our universe started from the simple soup of uh, elementary particles and then has been undergoing um, steady evolution uh, toward the complex structures in close analogy to the biology. When I'm talking about the complexity, I'm talking in the sense of energy density rate, which is measured like the flow of the flux per the unit mass per unit time. That is the measure of the complexity. Uh, um, uh, what is really interesting, when we receive the data, uh, the photons uh, into our instruments, they have been uh, copied so many times through, through our instrument, up to the, up to the uh, screens, up to the papers, or transparencies, which means that information requires copying or propagation. In that sense, uh, we can say that is uh, some very, very quality of the, uh, of the real information. In physics, we actually think of information as entropy. And here is actually the Shannon uh, definition of the entropy. And connection between these two notions is subject of many discussion. And there are some progress about this. In this talk, we will actually use the third way of measuring entropy, that is Bekenstein-Hawking bound. And that will be presented in the, in the second part. What is really interesting is that we can find information or this entropy embedded in vivo, in nature, and also in silico, in our labs, in our computers. And how much they are correlated, you can always see when you put your data and models. And here you can see actually the most iconic example about matching or correlating the entropy or information in vivo as a result of, of um, uh, galaxy redshift surveys of the great wall of the galaxy and what is produced in our computers by our models. So we can actually have such correlation. Um, when we think about entropy, we can also think about this as a, uh, as a uh, number of degrees on which, can, which we can broadcast some quantity, like for example, kinetic energy. If you have one white ball, one uh, yellow ball, then entropy wouldn't be actually changed. However, if you hit with one white ball all of this, then uh, entropy would be multiplied by the number of the degrees of freedom. And in that sense, also we can think about entropy. Also, we heard a lot about uh, accretion disks. We have accretion disks as well around supermassive black holes. 
and uh, they produce all scientropy. Uh, infolding matter is scattered or receive a huge dose of the angular momenta and then can be expelled. So accretion disks are also expelling and gravitational collapse producing the entropy by the way of uh, radiating gravitational potential energy and expelling high velocity, high angular momentum material. That is uh, a way how we can uh, perceive also ent uh, 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 entropy in, in the nature. Um, uh, on our planet, according to the Clayton and Lawrence investigation from 2005, uh, <coughs> the largest entropy production uh, connected to the living organisms occurs at the surface of our planet when, the s uh, when is produced about 63% of the entropy. That is occur when the photons hit the pigments in <laughs> plants or uh, in plants and uh, this uh, photon flux energy is dissipated mostly through the translational or and or vi vibrational modes of the surrounded water molecules and actually according to the this previous uh, picture we have the broadcasting of the photon flux on ever increasing micro states because of this photon dissipation is the way of the production of the entropy as for hematrophs they actually tend to uh, uh, lead geophysical compounds to the state of thermal <coughs> equilibrium so they cannot uh, attribute contribute to the uh, overall power ener uh, uh, energy produ uh, production on our planet the same is also for heterotrophs and when we want to seek uh, the uh, description or uh, definition of life the distinction between terrestrial extraterrestrial origin is just one stage because there are many many other things about which should we should think. We have example of the internet. Behind the internet we have the propagation uh, 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 of information but behind the, this, such, uh, this uh, system we don't have physical theory which support it. So actually we can face many many challenges how to define what is actually <laughs> life and that must be um, related to uh, quantities which are subjected to the physical laws. Um, Professor Nitschke has been talking uh, about really important uh, 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 topic about non-equilibrium thermodynamics and what we know is actually that uh, <coughs> equilibrium structures arises when nature minimizing the potential like Gibbs energy or gravitational energy because of this we have folded proteins we know what is the planet in our uh, uh, solar system however uh, when when the thermodynamical potential are applied on the on the on the system such for example uh, gradient of heat or gradient of the concentration of the matter within uh, stars uh, then arise actually the dissipative structure or more precisely process which actually tends to foment this gradient which give rise to, to them. This process tends to augment the entropy production to copy information all around to broadcast it and then because of this it destroy uh, what, give <laughs> what was given rise to it. So because of this there is a some kind of heresy <laughs> in this picture what can be life because in the quest for definition of life we should think about what can be uh, life too. Why, we, why do we need uh, uh, drivers? There are some reasons we heard uh, through this uh, uh, conference the problem with catal catalyz catalyzes and autocatalyzes reactions because each uh, uh, chemical action uh, has thermodynamic reaction so catalyzes can be del deleterious in such a way and some suggested that some reflexive activity connected to catalysis 
can actually uh, promote uh, catalysis action to propagate. The second is uh, 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 threshold of complexity which was proposed by von Neumann in his very famous um, uh, talk, uh, 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 lectures about self-replicating systems where he stated that exists threshold of complexity or complication in his own words below which is not possible to, uh, to have self-replication. And in robotics, he didn't calculate, didn't give any formula about this, but in robotics, they actually calculate it as a logarithmic value between the, uh, between the complexity of the cell of robotic uh, arm and its des descendants. However, this, this cannot be applied to bacteria because they are so tiny uh, mass systems and uh, with so tiny amount of energy which is powering it. From the other side, we have discrepancy between the dimension of the medium of dimension that where is the embedded the information in biological system and the dimension of the chemical network. Because of this, we needed we need actually the drivers. As I mentioned, Professor Nitschke, he, he was actually talking gave a uh, so uh, excellent uh, presentation about this driver. And here we will actually uh, uh, present this driver. This driver uh, from cosmology uh, 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 was um, uh, induced by, uh, by uh, uh, finding of uh, um, teams working on cosmic mi microwave background that we have actually that we are living now in the universe which is uh, which is uh, uh, which is which has the same almost comparable value of the energy density and uh, uh, dark matter density. So what is the reason that we live in this in this in such moment? Uh, anthropic principle were used by Steven Weinberg, where he said that energy density, dark energy density, which is actually the cosmological constant, if would be <coughs> negative, life as such on the Earth wouldn't be formed. And if would be so huge positive, actually the galaxies wouldn't be formed. He invoked anthropic, anthropic, um, anthropic uh, notions. However, we heard during the excastology that it was, it was uh, not working actually. What we know now, uh, the best solution what we, what we have is actually for this situation causal entropic principle which states that any form of observation uh, of the observer in the universe must be subjected to the thermodynamical laws and the principle of causality, which means that if, we, if you have observer in the universe, whatever form, it requires energy because observation requires free energy and it also uh, produce the uh, entropy. So we are living in the, habit in hab in the habitable universe because the uh, number of the, observ the potential observers which can occupy our universe is proportional to the entropy. Whenever, wherever you can find the huge entropy in causal diamond, then we can find actually possibility uh, for observers. So that is what we know from cosmology now. And because we are approaching to determine uh, the amount of the entropy in our universe from the black holes, we should uh, just to mention that when we have a kinetically dominated system, which is hot, uh, the kinetic energy l much larger than gravitational energy, this state is the state of the highest, of the highest entropy. However, when the kinetic energy drops, then this state and gravitation start to dominate. Uh, this is the state of the lowest entropy. And 
gravitational collapse or clumping is actually the highest state of entropy. So when we are talking about the entropy from the, uh, from the black holes, we should think about these two distinctions. And uh, because I would present the amount of the entropy uh, in the decimal bit scale, um, you can see it, how it is actually related to the power two usual um, uh, scale of the information. And here are given some specific um, times in our human history that you can just have a picture about these values that is the state when information was, was not created. And this is the, actually the, the instant of the Big Bang when God, when God um, uh, separated zeros from ones. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> this is, for example, the, uh, the moment, sorry, where we can uh, uh, replication in complex, uh, um, the moment of the entrance of complex uh, 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 organisms when they decided to copy their information, multicellular organism. So they decide to copy and broadcast information in much higher number of degrees of freedom. And here is, for example, IBM first mega byte computer, and etc. So our results will be presented on the scale of the number of the Google. So that is the larger number presented in this conference. That is just for your actually information. And uh, because for determination of the black hole, uh, entropy will use the Bekenstein Hawking, um, uh, uh, Bekenstein Hawking bound, uh, bound formula, which relates the information of the entropy uh, with the mass of the black hole, that is only one object for, for which we can actually directly calculate the amount of information inside of it. And it is actually related to the surface bounding that entity, not to the volume, but to this the, uh, to the surface. And this is this boundary is uh, given in the notion of the black hole e event horizon. It is not complicated formula, but what is complicated is to get the mass of the black hole. Uh, why we count the black holes? Why we are interested in it? In it? Because in the past several uh, uh, years, or uh, at the end of the uh, in the last years of the 20th century, we know that all galaxies are inhabited by supermassive black holes ranging from the million up to the billion solar masses. And uh, uh, because of this, we uh, also from our observations, we know that they have really huge luminosity, the highest luminosity in the universe. And uh, if, we uh, if we look at the complexity of the galaxy, of normal galaxy, it actually is increasing in the sense of the energy flow per mass per unit time. Uh, as, for, uh, uh, as for active galactic nuclei, we know that almost 10%, maybe more, of all galaxies must pass through this phase of active of activity uh, active galactic nuclei would have actually complexity to uh, magnitude two uh, orders of magnitude higher mm -hmm. than normal galaxy so they are the most com complex uh, objects which we can observe in the universe they have some accretion disk embedded in the gas of the broadline region and the black hole are within within the the center the emitting region is the, of the size of our our system <coughs> solar system um, how we know actually that there are residing black hole supermassive black hole because of the really fast uh, uh, really fast 
variation of the signal from this object ranging from light hours up to light months. And principle of causality implies that such variation must be, uh, uh, must, uh, must be produced by the object which, which is smaller than its light crossing time. Otherwise, it <coughs> will be smoothed. Uh, we actually <coughs> obtain uh, the mass of the black hole using the astro astronomical tomography or reverberation mapping, where we actually uh, calculate the dimension of the broadline region, which is subjected to the gravitational uh, influence of the black hole. So the most simple case is actually that the shell of the photons hitting the uh, ions in the, uh, in the, in the broadline region, some hitting the observers, and from the, actually the, uh, the time lag between these two signals, and the virial te theorem, we can calculate the mass of the black hole. This is actually uh, the process which lasts monitoring for 20 or more years uh, for uh, each object. And all of these um, uh, results of astronomical tomography are collected in this database. Uh, here are some of our uh, 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 results from our monitoring campaigns and we uh, from this database consisting of 56 masses of the black holes including from our man monitoring campaigns we were able to estimate the entropy here is actually presented that we have in our in this database the uh, 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 black holes over the whole range of the black hole masses and how would like actually their entropy in the this uh, form of the uh, integral uh, function mass of this object. However, because we have uh, in the close vicinity of us these uh, um, supermassive black holes, we actually uh, uh, use for, their, uh, for the calculation of the, uh, 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 for their entropy this integral function which arises from the two mass catalog uh, surveys and we can see how our uh, how our um, data are uh, well matching in, in silico information from the, from the catalog. So we use this integral mass function, integrated and calculated the factor of energy input into intergalactic space from uh, black holes in comparison to the, to the uh, cosmic mac microwave background. And we can see that from our uh, database, uh, the potential of the contribution of the energy from black holes are much larger than predicted by line weaver at all, which is comparable to the visible. And uh, uh, if we actually calculate the weighted average mass of AGN of uh, supermassive black holes from our catalog, we actually can see that the amount of the entropy in the visible universe, when we, up, uh, when we uh, take into account that we have 10 on power 11 galaxies and use uh, weighted average mass from our catalog for each of these <laughs> Uh, supermassive black holes, we actually got this amount of the entropy, which is cons uh, which can be uh, in uh, uh, which can be uh, uh, in 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 our universe. Mm -hmm. This amount is the of is of the order of the Google, and this amount is much smaller than the maximum of information which can be stored in our universe calculated by Lloyd in 2000 second quantum mechanics from MIT, which is actually 10 on power in 123. So we have actually the gap between huge gap, the dissipative process can be, can propagate, but there is a question, what kind of entropy is actually correlated with the existence of the observers according to the causal entropy principle induced by Bousseau et al. 
what we can see from this is actually that supermassive black holes are actually, uh, uh, their masses are and entropy are really new cosmological parameter and it, it influence in energetic input and entropy input in our galaxy, uh, in our universe are tremendous. So uh, it is really important uh, for us to understand what is more and behind of this. Thank you so much.